want to be a dignified Muslim, don't use slang. Use proper language. Proper language, it will increase your respect. If he says that slang reduces your respect, then no slang will increase your respect. You've got to understand that, it's common sense. Every time someone speaks to you, you have clear-cut language, subhanallah. It will improve and enhance your skills of portraying yourself to others at the same time. Because you are not used to words which are eaten, words which are chewed, words which are not understood by everybody. And that is another hadith. He says, be careful from using deep words that people do not understand. He says that in the hadith. So sometimes you have a person who comes to talk to us or we talk to people. We've just been reading the dictionary as a novel. You know, in my part of the, the world, sometimes what you have is young people, they are reading a book and you wonder what book is this? It's a dictionary. Why? They are trying to increase. It's not bad. They're trying to increase their knowledge. So every word they read, then the problem is after that. They want to now use every word they read and want to tell people that. So now what happens is, they then use such complicated words that you don't understand them at all. I know of one example and I'm going to say it here because I'm proud of that. The president in our country, his name is Robert Mugabe. Very, very highly educated individual. One of the most highly educated leaders across the globe. He has 14 degrees with him. And when he speaks at the United Nations, if some of you want to Google it and listen to his speech, no matter what he says, I'm not discussing the content of his speech, but I'm discussing the type of words he uses. He uses the deepest and most difficult words, but that is only when he is out on an international platform. What is the reason? He wants to show the British that we have mastered the language better than you. You need a dictionary to understand what we are saying here. <laughs> and it's a fact because they look at him, they don't know, later on they discuss, the man said, what, what did he say? <laughs> Now, that is on a lighter note, obviously. Now, let's get back to what we were saying. For us, we should not be using deep words because we don't need to prove a point to anyone. We want to convey the message, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ عَلَى الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا Definitely, the tongue has been kept as a means of expressing what is in the heart. That is what the tongue is there for. So, express it easily with simple words. And we should try and adopt that. As the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, use easy words, easy language, simple language, not deep, sophisticated language. No, that is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Some who are lecturers of philosophy and, and, and language, they might disagree with me. But let me inform you, go out and interact with the masses. Yes, when you are speaking to lawyers and people on your level, you can use the high words. There's no problem because you are speaking on that level. But when you are speaking to the masses, you need to understand if you would like them to take to what you are saying, you need to use simple, basic language that they use on a day to day basis. Otherwise, you will not get across. So that was the type of language the Prophet ﷺ used. We said he did not eat his words. We said he prohibited us or he discouraged us. Let's not use the word prohibited. He discouraged us from using slang and he discouraged us from using difficult words. Then he spoke when necessary. He, he did not speak unless he knew that now my speech is beneficial. Whether it was a joke, he also joked. Remember, the Prophet ﷺ joked even with his family members. How many of us, especially the older people, sit with our family members and tell them decent jokes? In Islam, when we say decent, it must not be X-rated, number one. It must never be about another race or color. Never. Haram. To totally prohibited. It must never ever be about another religion, totally prohibited. The Quran prohibits you to joke about other religions. Don't ever mock and jeer and joke about others who are calling besides Allah, the gods besides Allah. Because in return, they might start joking about Allah and you were the cause of it. May Allah protect us all. So it is prohibited. Look at how beautiful these teachings of social conduct are. They make cartoons, we will never make cartoons. Never. Not even about their gods. You cannot attack fire with fire. And here in Islam, we are being taught that even the Prophet ﷺ shared lighter moments with his companions. So many times we have narrations where 
They say the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam laughed until his back teeth, the molars, were showing. Subhanallah. I want, that is a broad smile, very broad smile. Some narrations say the canines were showing. That's also a very broad smile. But when he laughed, there was a method of laughing that is also part of our social conduct. You don't laugh in such a way that your belly goes up and down, up and down, and there is an earthquake-like feeling in the room. <laughs> Laughter is according to what it has to be. That's it. That's your social conduct. Because when you laugh so much, let me tell you what happens. If everything is a joke, even when you joke every few minutes, maybe there might be some who do that. Because I have certain friends who do do that. People will not take you seriously in anything in life. That is the result of it. And who caused it? You caused it. Why? You want to convert everything into a joke? So that means even when you are serious, people will say, take him lightly, you know, not a pinch of salt, a whole bag. So the Prophet ﷺ joked. It's part of his character and conduct. He shared light moments. But the question is for me and you, how many of us do do that with those who are closest to us? I know of certain people, being a counselor myself, when we counsel people for their problems and what they have within the homes and so on, there are people who will spend hours on end talking to their friends and joking and laughing. They come home, they cannot share one single joke with the poor wife who is sitting there with a prepared meal waiting for the last two hours. Not even one. And yet they were enjoying, they know it in their hearts and minds. And the poor wife is probably even doubting where he was. May Allah protect us. Rather, if he comes in and he says, you know, this is the issue. In fact, you know what? I will share a joke with you, inshallah, so that we can remember this occasion. I will share a very good joke at the end. If I forget, please remind me. In fact, now there are so many in my mind that I don't even know which one to mention. But we'll see at the end, inshallah. Just to show you that on a lighter note, something which does not hurt anyone. Something which is not attacking any of the genders. Something which is not attacking any other color or race. Something not attacking any religion. No, we want a joke where people can laugh and at the same time it is, it is a point of uh, light entertainment and it is not bad. So that was the conduct of the Prophet ﷺ. He had both sides. How many of us actually know that you know to, to create laughter sometimes is a sunnah? Because normally when we see Pious people, they look very serious. And yes, they are pious. They are pious. But sometimes we don't get this type of speech from them because they are concerned that if we have to say this, being people who everyone looks up to, then people might not understand. And for that reason, it's not mentioned normally. But today we are sitting here. I am a brother of yours, probably younger than the majority who are here. And I'm sharing this with you because it is serious. Now the world is changing. Many people are saying the Muslims are boring. Especially when it comes to marriage. Some girls want to marry outside. And some boys want to marry outside. And they say, no, the Muslims are boring. They have no idea of what life is all about. They want to sit and so on. That is not true. Last night I made mention of some of the, the romance that occurred between the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his wife. And I used the word romance. Because I have come across a book which says, the best story, the best love story that history has known. Someone might think Romeo and Juliet and this and that. No ways, nowhere near. It is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Aisha radiallahu anha and how he treated her. But we don't know it. Nobody's discussed it. Nobody's tried to look for it. Nobody's bothered. We'd rather go for counseling, marriage counseling to people who know nothing about Islam and they teach us things. And at the same time, we'll take it because they taught it to us. Let me go to one other point. I spoke about how the Prophet spoke. That is a very important point because we speak every single day. How he spoke. Before I get to the second issue, let me complete regarding the speech. I was saying he spoke only when it was necessary. That does not mean if someone asks you, how are you brother? Then you think to yourself, that's not necessary. And you just look at him <laughs> and, and you just nod your head. No, it is an act of worship to respond in a nice way. But you don't have to say, no, I am fine. I went there and you know, I came and you know, yesterday and I'm planning to go to London next week. And I'm planning to uh, really, I want to make Umrah and Hajj next year. And you know, we're planning to have children as a, fa as, as, as a family. <laughs> now, all that is unnecessary information. One narration says, Ista'inu ala qada'i hawa'ijikum bil kitmani. According to one narration, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seek assistance to fulfill your needs by being secretive about it. So you don't have to inform anyone anything. You have a big business project, don't tell anyone, nobody. 
The hadith says, if you want it to succeed, keep it a secret. When it is done,